community. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Shamrock News. I'm Vivian, aka Vivian. Throughout this month, we will be celebrating Black History Month and our Community Connections class. And for the rest of the year, we will be celebrating Black History on the Shamrock News. All right, so I'm looking at the, the plan for the Black History Month videos, and it, it feels like all we need to do is just run the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech. We'll talk about Rosa Parks a little bit, get into segregation. And then we just mentioned that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves and that, that's about it, right? That's all we need to do? Well, I was thinking we could talk about capitalism and how it affected black people. Yeah, and what about black stereotypes and cultural appropriation? And we gotta talk about hair, food and music. Ooh, and we should also talk about the 13th Amendment. Yes, and we should mention how black culture has affected pop culture. Ooh, good call. And not to mention just black excellence and black pride in general. I just, here's my thing. Like, we talk about black excellence and black pride, but how come we don't do like white excellence and white pride? And how come there's not like a white history month? get to that question but first we need to talk about what is black history month well black history month is a time we double our focus recognizing the central role of african americans in u.s history also known as african american history month in 1926 carter g woodson founded negro history week which then became black history month woodson's message was that blacks should be proud of their heritage and that other americans should also understand it since 1976, every U.S. president has officially designated the month of February Black History Month. Other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also devote a month to celebrate Black History Month. Okay, so we've been celebrating Black History for a long time and other places celebrate Black History. But why do we need to celebrate Black History? Well. Black History Month is an annual celebration of contributions and achievements by African Americans throughout U.S. history. It also highlights our struggles for freedom and equality. In 1975, President Ford issued a message urging all Americans to recognize the important contribution made to our nation's life and culture by black citizens. History is often written from the perspective of power. And as we know, white people have historically been the people in charge of our legislation, financial, and education systems. Yeah, but all those white people probably worked really hard to get to those positions of power. What's the big deal about that? You know who Thomas Edison is, right? <laughs> yeah, I know Thomas Edison. He invented the light bulb in 1879. Yes, but did you know about Lewis Lattimore? Lewis who? The light bulb itself was invented by Thomas Edison, but the invention used to create a longer lasting light bulb 
where the carbon filament came from African-American inventor, Louis Lattimore. The light bulb we use today are more like the ones Lattimore invented than the ones Edison invented. Whoa, I never learned about that. Yeah, so that's exactly why we need to learn more about black history. Throughout our time in education, most of the people we celebrate and the history we learn tend to be about white people and often ignore the contributions of black people. <sighs> so what else don't I know? <laughs> A lot. <sighs> A lot of black history is labeled as the struggle, but also as the triumphs. We don't talk about how the foods that slaves ate off have turned into staples of modern cuisines. Yeah, or how some of the songs they sang turned into gospels and spirituals, which turned into blues and jazz, which then turned into R&B and rock and roll, and eventually reggae, hip hop, and the music that a lot of us listen to today. Come on, everybody knows that Elvis is the king of rock and roll. I mean, I'm in love, I'm all shook up, do do do. Mm -hmm. Hey yeah, hey yeah. I mean, it's just one of the greatest songs ever written. Well, that song was actually written by Otis Blackwell, a famous African American songwriter from that time period, who also wrote songs for Jerry Lee Lewis. And there are many black activists in our country who have made contributions to our country. Yeah, but it was Abraham Lincoln who freed the slaves. But have you heard of Reconstruction or Juneteenth? I mean, I saw some people talking about it on Facebook last summer. I don't really know what they meant though. I also didn't click on the article or any of the links or read any of the information either. So, Reconstruction ended the remnants of the Confederacy and abolished slavery, making the newly freed slaves citizens with civil rights, but that didn't stop slavery. Juneteenth celebrates the day that the last slaves were freed on June 19, 1865, almost two and a half years after Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. Man, that's a lot of stuff to fit into 28 days. Why'd they make Black History the shortest month? It's not a 28 day thing. It's a history thing, just like everything else. We should always celebrate Black History and we're still making Black History. I am Black History. My name is Buddy, and I am Black History. My name is Angel, and I am Black History. My name is Brooklyn, and I am Black History. My name is Jasmine, and I am Black History. My name is Isaac, and I am Black History. My name is Mateo, and I am Black History. I'm Elizabeth, and I am Black History. Mr. B here, I am Black History. I'm Mr. Tate. And I am Black History. Julian, I'm Black History, man! I think I'm starting to understand, but I still feel like I got a long way to go. Well, the first step is educating yourself and not being afraid to ask questions. I guess I'm just worried that, like, I'm going to have more questions, but as a white person, like, what if I ask those questions and someone thinks I'm racist? What do I do? We created Google Form where you can ask questions and be curious anonymously. Mr. Dix and I will check in on it, connect with our BSU leaders, and get that information for our next lesson. The goal is to learn from each other, recognize different cultures, and celebrate diversity. Ask away. It's almost time for aspiring AVID students to apply for our school-wide AVID program. Let's check in with some of our 8th grade members to see their experience with the program. It's about that time of year where we start recruiting new students for our AVID program. Where I was an AVID school, which means we use AVID wicker strategies to keep an organized binder in all of our classes. However, we also have an AVID class for which 
our 7th and 8th grader students can apply. In this class, students will develop a close-knit, familiar bond with their classroom community. Together, they'll help each other prepare for those post-high school life as they research careers, participate in tutorials, and learn effective note-taking strategies. And they also have a lot of fun. My name is Isaac, and my favorite thing about AVID is the trips that we take to check out other colleges. My name's Stephanie, and my favorite thing about AVID is how close we eventually get to, and how like we learn together as like one. My name is Shelby, and my favorite part about AVID is probably the games that we would play in class. Like, there was this one game we played where we had to, we only had masking tape and balloons, and we had to build the tallest tower up on our desk using nothing but balloons and masking tape, and it was really fun. My name is Emma, and my favorite thing about AVID is like how it's like my second family. One way AVID has helped me is it's helped me like stay organized and take really good notes. One way this class has helped me was in sixth grade, I had probably the messiest binder in the history of messy binders. It was it was horrible. After I did Avid, my binder was still horrible, but I had a binder instead of just carrying papers around. So that was a huge upgrade. One way this class has helped me is I've gotten a lot better at being able to take notes and figure out which information is actually valuable to write down. One way Avid helped me is by like preparing me for college and we do all these college researches and it really helps you like have a mindset on what you should be looking out for and like what type of like things you would want to do as a career. Stay tuned to the Shamrock News and your Community and Connections class for more information on how to apply. to another Clover quote of the week. This week's quote comes from the civil rights activist Dorothy Height. Dorothy was born on March 24, 1912 in Richmond, Virginia. She grew up with her sister Anthony Aldrich and her parents Fanny Burroughs and James Edward Height. At the age of five, she moved to Rankin, Pennsylvania where she excelled as a student. In 1929, she was admitted to Bernard College but did not attend because they did not accept African American students. Instead, she later enrolled and graduated from New York University where she earned her undergraduate and her master's degree in educational psychology. After doing lots of work throughout her community and supporting her peers, friends, and others, she joined the NCNW. In only seven years, in 1997, she became the fourth president of the NCNW. While working with both the YWCA, Young Women's Christian Association, and the NCNW. She was in the Civil Rights Movement and she was considered a member of the Civil Rights Six. Overall, Dorothy was an amazing and strong leader that fought for African American and women's rights. So, to celebrate Black History Month, our quote, no one will do for you what you need to do for yourself. We cannot afford to be separate. We have to see that all of us are in the same boat comes from Dorothy Height. This quote goes hand in hand with this year's theme, One Big Team. In order to make this year as fun and as successful as it can be, we need to understand that we are all sailing in the same boat. So, one last time, this week's quote is, no one will do for you what you need to do you for yourself. We cannot afford to be separate. We have to see that all of us are in the same boat from Dorothy Height. Thank you for taking the time to listen celebrate and recognize a member of the African American community. All month long we are celebrating Black History Month so let's take the time to appreciate the people that came before us. So thank you Dorothy Height and thank you for listening to your Clover Quote of the Week. Let's check out this week's online helpful hint. This week, for our helpful hint, we're going to be talking about how to end work from our Google Classroom. 
Sometimes we need to make edits to our work. However, if we want to edit our presentation or our Google Doc, it might say that we don't have permission to do so. This is usually because we've submitted our work on Google Classroom. Once you submit your work, your teacher will technically own the work. If you'd like to make edits after you submitted your work, all you have to do is unsubmit your work. Just go to the assignment in your Google Classroom, then go to where it says your work. You'll see a button that says unsubmit. Just click on that button and you'll have editing access to your assignment again. Then when you make your edits and then you resubmit your assignment. A little tip, once you resubmit your work after you make edits, email your teacher and let them know so they know to check your new version of your document. And that's this week's online helpful hit. Welcome back scientists, and today I'll be telling you about elephant toothpaste. In case you couldn't tell, my favorite thing about science is explosions, so that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> You might be familiar with hydrogen peroxide as an antiseptic used to clean cuts and scrapes, which it does by killing bacteria. But what is it? It's a liquid made from hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. When hydrogen peroxide breaks down, it turns into oxygen and water. Normally this breakdown happens very slowly, but you can make the reaction happen faster. How? By adding a catalyst, such as yeast. This means that if you mix yeast with hydrogen peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide will rapidly break down into water and oxygen gas. Oxygen gas forms bubbles. These bubbles would usually escape from the liquid and pop quickly, but adding a little dish soap provides additional surface tension, allowing the bubbles to get trapped and creating lots of foam. And that is how you make elephant toothpaste. Here's the materials if you want to try it yourself, and happy experimenting! At Rao Middle School, we have an incredible counseling department. And with this week being Counselors Appreciation Week, we like to take some time to show some love to Ms. Draymond, Ms. Harris, and Harry. We'd like to take some time to thank our Rao Middle School Counseling Department. We undoubtedly have the best trio of counselors in the entire country. They are Ms. Draymond, Mrs. Harris, and Terry. These three do so much for our school. They talk to students who need somebody to listen to. They advocate for students' needs in classrooms. They help students and families find access to resources that benefit their mental, physical, social, emotional, and spiritual well-being. They are involved in meetings about how to keep kids engaged and connected. They're at the dances and the movie nights and all those other events and activities we host. They go to elementary schools to talk about Rao. They help schedule every student's classes. They develop relationships with our students and families. Rao isn't just a job to them. It's a community they invest in. And we are incredibly fortunate to have them a part of our community. So thank you, Miss Draymond, Mrs. Harris, and Harry for all that you do for everyone in the Rao community. Remember to check out the Rao Middle School Podcast Network. We've been posting new episodes every week featuring content created by our Rao Middle School staff and students. In the last week, 
we've posted a few different podcasts. First, we posted our third cellophane wrap slugs podcast, All That Rocks. I looked, I looked more up, and I found some, some more good rock facts. Do you guys want to hear them? Yeah. yeah. I love that. Okay, so I found two, like, images, and it's just Dwayne The Rock Johnson and some text next to him. Number one. Actor Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, travels with a private gym, which consists of over 40,000 pounds of equipment that over 100 crew members assemble at each filming location he is in. And this one has a second fact on it. And I want to read it, um, but it's completely unrelated to him. We also posted episode 4 of Cellophane Rap Slugs, where our crew talked about clowns, magicians, and worms on a string. You know, I have a question. I have a few questions. Um, of course. Shoot. What are some What are some examples of the darker powers that corrupt feral clowns? And second question, um, are, there, are there any significant differences in the clowns, depending on what power corrupts them? For example, I know of one, one the duo Lingo Owl. Is that, say, different from um, the, um, the, the mind god? <laughs> So, like, the do anything, owl. depending on which power or how it makes it happen. Then we posted a podcast from a sixth grade group, Miss G Calls, the Michael Sarah Sriracha Baby Holy Trinity Fan Club. They talked about Denson's learning. And it's easier, not easier actually, my grades have went down, but I think distance learning is way harder than just going to school. Yeah, because it's. I'm more of a, you know, visual learner, so you can't just tell me how to do it. Also, when we're doing asynchronous work, you can't just ask a teacher a question if you don't really get what you're supposed to be doing. Check out those podcasts and stay tuned for more podcasts like It's Okay to Not Be Okay and A Day in the Life and Moments with Steph. The Ryle Middle School Podcast Network can be found wherever you get your podcasts. Our second movie night of the year is approaching, and we'd like you to join us. Our last movie night was an incredible success. We gathered together and had about 25 students along with their families, and Mr. Dix and Ms. Drainen all joined in and watched the movie. Folks got their popcorn and their snacks and their refreshments as they all joined at their Google Meet and watched the movie. And since we had so much fun last time, We'd like to do it again. So on Friday, February 5th at 5 p.m., we'll be holding another Round Middle School movie night. Go to our, your Google Classroom grade level hubs in order to vote which movie we'll be watching. Our theme is Princess. There's a heated debate in a weekly Shamrock News meeting about whether movies that feature a princess helping a prince get his life together were the same thing as movies with a princess as a protagonist. We determined they are not. So you get an opportunity to vote which princess movie you would like to watch. And to find instructions on how to join the movie via Google Meet when the time comes. And that time is Friday, February 5th at 5 p.m. Be sure to vote and we'll see you there. Mr. Dix will announce the winner on Thursday in your grade level hub. Thanks for joining us, Round Middle School. We'll see you next time on the Shamrock News. Same Shamrock time, same Shamrock place. Peace. Sunshine in my eyes and-